Hey guys, welcome back. It's uh, Steve here from Nostalgia. Uh, sorry I took the past few days off. Uh, I ended up catching some sort of bug and was pretty sick over the past few days. So uh, I'm just starting to kick it and I'm feeling a little bit better. So I figured I'd uh, make the next installment video. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on how to set up background music uh, for the Raspberry Pi on the Pi Station. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have some sort of music file that you'd like to use. So in this case, what I did is I just went online and found some royalty free music, downloaded it, put it on my desktop so it's ready to go. But you can use any music file you'd like, regardless of how you've got it. If you bought it off iTunes, uh, you will just need it to be in MP3 format. Uh, I've got my music file here. And then the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to download the background music script. So the script itself is going to uh, tell the Raspberry Pi and RetroPie exactly what to do and how to run the music. Um, they've got it set up really conveniently where it'll fade in and out appropriately. It's at a really nice level so that way it's not overpowering. Um, it's it's pre-configured quite well. So what we need to do is we need to go to the internet and I've actually already got the, uh, the window open um, and I'll put the link to the page in the description. Um, but this is actually the set of instructions. This is where I found out how to actually do that. It's right on the RetroPie website. It, they've got a great support forum for a ton of different things, lots of different types of customization that you can do there. Um, but essentially what I've done is I've followed all the instructions and I'm going to just make a video of me doing that um, just so it's a little bit easier to follow. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different revisions and we need to download the latest revision just because it is the... Uh, the most recent one, it's the one that has the least amount of issues. And I mean, I've had this running now for a few months and haven't had any problems, haven't been, been glitchy at all. It's been running perfect. So it looks like this final revision seems to be the final revision. So you're going to go ahead and click on it. It'll take you to pastebin.com. And then in here, you've actually got a Python file that you're going to need to download. So we're going to click download and it's going to download it right to our desktop. I'm going to hit save. Uh, it's a relatively small file. It shouldn't take long and it's already done. So that's it for this. Um, we don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. So you can see it's right here. Uh, the very first thing that we'll do is we'll just rename that just so it's a little bit easier for us to work with later. Um, we're going to name it background music, no spaces, no underscores, nothing dot py. Uh, so background music dot py or Python. Uh, and now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and create a folder on our desktop. And we're just going to simply call this music and we're going to open up that folder and then we're going to create another folder inside and we're going to call this script. So we'll call this script again, lowercase uh, for that. And what I'm going to do in the script file is I'm going to drag that background music .py file over to the script folder. So just so that way it is in there. That's the set of instructions that RetroPie will look for, and we're going to instruct RetroPie on how to find that file. Uh, in the actual music folder, though, we can go ahead and drag our MP3 file. So now that that's pretty much done here, we can close this, and what we want to do is we want to move this music folder into the same directory as our ROM folders that we used earlier uh, in the last video on how to transfer ROMs onto your uh, RetroPie. So you're going to click here, backslash, backslash, RetroPie, and you're going to hit enter. And it'll pop up. The only way it's going to pop up is if your Raspberry Pi is on. So please do turn it on if you don't get anything that pops up. It's very possible that you haven't turned on your, uh, your Raspberry Pi. But turn it on, connect it to the network, and then you should be able to access it that way. So we're going to go ahead and click on the ROMs folder. Uh, and then right in here, we don't need to do anything else. We just need to click and drag our music folder. It says copy to ROMs. We're going to do that. It takes no time at all. Unless you fill it with a ton of music, which I don't normally recommend. Um, it shouldn't take any time at all. It's already there. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and refresh. And there's our music folder. When we double click on music, we've got our script folder and our music file, our MP3 file. And then when you double click on script, our script is there. So that's it. We can go ahead and back out of this. And now we've got our music folder loaded up into our ROMs directory. Now what we need is a piece of software um, called PuTTY. And what PuTTY does is it's going to allow us to access the back end of the Raspberry Pi right through our network, right through our computer. So we don't actually have to go and mess around with a keyboard and 
and getting into the back end of uh, Raspberry Pi through that, we can actually do it right from our PC and it tends to be a little bit more convenient to do it this way. So um, we don't need this anymore, but we will need this website. So I'll link to it. Um, it's really easy to find. Even if you just went to Google and you searched putty, um, it'll take you there on the first link. But what I'll do is I will definitely leave a link in the description below. We're going to scroll down to the uh, alternative binary files. And depending on which version of Windows you have, if you're running a 32-bit or 64-bit, in my case, I'm running 64-bit, uh, you'll just download the appropriate one. So here I'll download the 64-bit, save it right to my desktop. It's a small file. It shouldn't take long to download. Um, it's already finished on my end, so I can go ahead and close the web browser, and you'll see here it is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to launch PuTTY. We're going to double-click on it, and it's going to bring us up to the configuration. And in here, you've got your host name. So you can either type in RetroPie, and you have to type it exactly as I did with a capital R and a capital P. If you can't find um, your Raspberry Pi on the network, by just typing in RetroPie, just like that. Uh, you can type in the IP address that um, we saw back in video one when we were setting up our Wi-Fi. So you can type that in directly and it should then be able to access it relatively quickly. Everything else, all the other settings here, you're gonna leave exactly as they are. So we are just gonna type in RetroPie, we're gonna hit open, and uh, Putty's gonna open. So it's gonna ask us to log in. We just have to log in, in the with the default credentials that every Raspberry Pi um, or RetroPi is, is defaulted to since we haven't gone into the settings and changed them. And I've never changed them. I don't really feel it's necessary to. Um, so your username is gonna be PI, hit enter. And then your password is Raspberry. And when you type that in, it's not actually going to show what you're typing, but rest assured that you are actually typing something. Then you'll hit enter and it will log you right in. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Excellent. So this right here is the back end um, of your RetroPie system. Um, you can do a lot of your, your coding here. You can do a lot of your changes to the configuration files. Um, this is kind of where a lot of the Meteor types of um, adjustments that you want to do will be done. So uh, in the next few videos, you'll see me use this more and more. Um, it looks a little overwhelming, especially if you're not familiar with, with code, um, but it's really not that bad. If you can follow instructions, you should be okay. So the very first thing that we need to do is install something called Pygame. Um, it's really easy to do. Just type exactly what I tell you to type. In this case, we're going to be typing in sudo apt get install and then python dash pygame. And you're just going to hit enter and it's going to go ahead and install. Um, I already had mine installed, so it didn't take very long. Uh, and that's great, but if you don't already have it installed, what you'll need to do is um, after it'll start to install, it'll say, are you sure you wanna do this or do you wanna proceed? You'll hit the Y button and hit enter. And then it takes about, I would say five or 10 minutes to install. So just let it do its thing. You'll know it's finished when this pie at RetroPie, this green little pie at RetroPie pops up and uh, it's ready for the next command. So now that that's installed for me, what we need to do is we need to go into our local directory um, so we can insert a line of code to tell the Raspberry Pi, first off, where the music is, uh, and second off, um, where's the script? Where, what's What set of instructions is it going to be following? So we need to type in here sudo nano um, forward slash etc forward slash rc dot local. And we're going to hit enter. And it's going to uh, bring us to a section where we'll need to insert uh, a single line of code towards the bottom. And you'll notice at the bottom over here, it's got an exit zero. We've got to use the arrows to scroll down there. And you can see that your cursor is the green highlighted cursor. So we're just going to go ahead right into the little space in between exit zero and this FI. And we're going to type the following. So bracket, open bracket, sudo, space, python, space, forward slash, home slash pi slash capital R retro capital P I E um, forward slash ROMs forward slash 
music forward slash scripts forward slash background music dot py and bracket space and the and sign. I usually put a little extra space here. Um, we in, in the future video when we do our um, our push button, we're going to be coming back here to add an additional line of code. So I always put the the space there just uh, just as a buffer. I, I feel like it looks nice, um, but it's not it's not necessary. Um, and then you can hit Control X to write that. It's going to ask if you want to save the modified buffer. You're going to hit the Y button. Uh, and then it's going to ask what you want to, to name it. And you'll leave it exactly as it is. You're just going to hit the enter button again. So now that that's saved, um, we should be good to go. We should technically be able to restart a Raspberry Pi and background music should start right away. Uh, as soon as emulation starts to emulation station starts to load, uh, it looks like we're going to be good. There's one thing I do want to note is that not all MP3 files will work. Um, most, most should if it doesn't, uh, and you do run into an issue, you're going to need to recode the file as an OGG file. Now that's something that you'll have to go online, just do a Google search. There's actually a ton of YouTube videos already out there um, that explain how you can recode it as an OGG file. It's, it's really, really unlikely that you're going to run into an audio file that doesn't work, but there are some out there. I don't know um, every music file in the world that works. I can't, I can't promise that, but most most of them do. Um, so now what we need to do is we're going to exit from here and we are going to switch over to the Raspberry Pi. So we don't need to do anything else. Um, I just need to type exit, hit enter, and it'll close that. But now just wait a second and we're going to get booted up on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. All right, so here we go. We're just going to go ahead and let it set up and uh, start. Uh, music should start playing right as the emulation station starts to load up, so we'll wait and see. And there it is, guys. So now the uh, the music's going to be playing in the background um, throughout the entirety of the menu. So you can go through and do pretty much whatever you want. You can browse as long as you want. Um, and what the music will do is it'll just constantly go on to a loop cycle. So it'll play this song all the way through, and then it'll just replay it again. Um, you can add multiple music files to your uh, music folder in your ROMs area. And what it'll do is it'll just play through them just like a CD, one track after another. Um, but that's pretty much it. I am going to show you guys um, loading into a game, um, how it tends to fade out and it'll fade back in um, when you exit the game. So I'm going to be quiet for a second so you guys can actually hear that. You can hear that it faded out um, and you've got that music or now you've got the audio from in-game playing. Awesome. Now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the game. And uh, as soon as I do that, you'll notice that the audio will tend to fade right back in and it'll start up again. There it is. All right, guys, so that's how you do it. That's how you add uh, background music to your uh, Raspberry Pi or your Pi station, if that's what you're working on. Uh, stay tuned. The next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, an audio fix, uh, how to force audio out over HDMI, because some TVs don't recognize the Raspberry Pi that way. And the other thing I'm going to do in that video as well, since it's all in the same area, is to overclock your SD card uh, slot. So it'll run and read and write at a slightly faster rate which will give you a little bit better performance. So uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Um, but we uh, appreciate it very much, guys. We'll talk to you soon.